here's a quick update of where we are. Um, we now have the center section of flooring, which is underneath the bridge deck. Uh, they are all cut. They are all drilled, countersunk, screwed down, all the spacing's correct. Uh, we also have now these outside pieces for the rear cockpit floorboard. Uh, those are both done here and one on the other side. They're not drilled or screwed down yet, but they are completely done with their fit work. And right up here you can see where I had to notch this floor plank out to fit around this uh, frame gusset, frame 2 gusset. Uh, same thing on the other side, it has to be notched out, but very good fit. And then our clearance, just like I talked about down the side here. And it'll be the same when I do this middle one. And I have the material to do this middle one uh, all the way across from frame 2 to frame 4 up here. So I've got the material to do both sides there. Um, and I also have a good majority of the material, if not all of it, a good majority to plank this front section of the boat. Uh, at the moment, that first batch of 100 screws that I bought, uh, again, was enough to do all of this, um, almost all of this, and all of this. And I have six left, which isn't quite enough to attach my, my very outside planks out here. So I'll have to run in town and get some more screws. Same story on these. Uh, I set up kind of a production line on my little drill press so that they're all countersunk the exact same depth, which is an exact match to the, to the other floorboards. And I did my very best um, when I was setting these up to try to color match them. Um, so this one here, this plank, center plank, is a, a darker African mahogany. And I did my best to match it with, with another piece. And then up here, also the darker African mahogany. So there, I did my very best to kind of color match them so that they look fairly accurate. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy with the turnout. It looks, it looks beautiful. Uh -huh. So it's, it's everything I was hoping it's going to be. So we'll get these outside ones attached and down. We'll get the frame 2 to frame 4, one long one on each side done. Uh, cut out and done and attached. I'll go pick up some more screws. And then we'll start planking this bow area. Man, we're, we're making good progress. We are almost done with this floor planking. And it is taking four ever but uh again i'm in no rush so long as it's beautiful when i'm done i'm happy so this is a little jig that i made um and basically you might be able to see it, it says uh hull right there so that's the side that goes to the hull and what this is is it is for marking out this cut on this long plank so that it matches the hull and it keeps the same gap that I have back here. So hopefully you can see the line on there, all the way up there. So what I did was I set this plank on top of my existing planks and it is directly in line with this. And then I figured out the distance of how far this plank needed to come over to be in the right spot and uh, added that to my, to my little layout stick. So then all you simply do is you just lay this flat on top of your board at 90 degrees, slide it over, and then you just trace the outside of the hull down that board. So that's my layout, that's my cut to match the side curve of the boat here. So I'm getting ready to cut that out, but that's how I did it, this little, little jig. Pretty simple. Now here's a look at that plank after it's been cut. Has a nice uniform gap all the way down it. And again, it runs from frame four all the way back to frame two. So we'll see if we can get kind of a look at it. So yeah, you can kind of see it there. Here's a better look at it. So now I've got to do the exact same thing that I did over here on this side. And you can see I've got the plank set here. and. Uh, you know, on top of having this custom cut all the way down, it also had to be notched out to fit around this gusset here. And it's a really nice fit. I need to slide it over tight, but really good fit. Same with this one, need to slide it over tight. Um, but fantastic progress. And then we're gonna have 
somewhere in here we're gonna have a, an armrest that comes up about four or five inches and then over to the side of the hull all the way down and that'll run from frame four about five inches tall all the way back to the end of the rear cockpit seat back over here so there'll be an armrest that runs down there on both sides um, which will cover this gap here so it'll be one long vertical member standing straight up and then capped on the top I'll probably put a cup holder one per seat on each side same back here cup holder cup holder and then I think I'm gonna go pick up some of those uh, round 12 volt receptacle like cigarette lighter receptacles and I'll probably recess one on each side of the front um, so you can charge you know cell phones or things like that or anyhow so this is the this is now you'll see the cutout of where my front seat base will be over the top of it so once the seats in it will look like the whole thing's planked but you'll be able to flip that that seat up and this will be the storage underneath it pretty damn cool making great progress well, now we're talking. Take a look at that. We now have this one cut and, and in. And again, they're not screwed down and you still need to go get screws. So this outside, this outside, this outside, and this outside are not screwed down. And you can see it's sticking up just a hair bit over here. Uh, this board has a little bit of a, an upward bow to it. But after the screws are in, it'll be perfectly flat. Uh, so it's turning out, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Look at that thing. Beautiful. So that's the cutout. That, that'll be my storage underneath the front seat. Um, pretty good cavity. It's probably about five inches deep in the middle or so. And then we'll have the seat base up on top of it, probably two to three more inches tall. So, you know, it'll have somewhere around eight inches of, of depth out in the center. Obviously, you know, the, the hull is shaped kind of like a bowl, so it'll be shallower on the outsides. But... Talk about awesome, huh? So now we're gonna start planking this this front section. I would say we're probably three quarters done with the planking. Oh, that's beautiful. Making fantastic progress. All right, well, here's a quick little comparison here. Um, this one over here was the factory blade that was on my skill 10 inch compound miter saw. And this one over here is after I replaced it with a DeWalt blade. Basically, it's the same version as my, uh, my table saw blade. So uh, anyhow, much, much, much cleaner cut. And you can see all of the blowout on the back sides. Again, these are the back sides of the cut. And there's, it's very slight on the new saw blade. The old one, the whole thing is just blowing out the cut really bad. So I think that was about 30 bucks. Just picked up a, a blade for it, a DeWalt. Um, Again, I'm not the hugest DeWalt fan, but I've been so impressed with this blade on my little homemade table saw. I can't count how many eight plus foot rips I've done on that blade. And it's still, it's still razor sharp like the day I bought it. The thing just cuts beautiful. And again, I'm not a DeWalt fan, but I've been very impressed with that blade. So when I noticed the cut quality really going to hell, look at that. Anyhow, when I noticed the cut quality start going to shit on my uh, my compound miter saw, I picked up a replacement blade, the same DeWalt one, because I was so impressed with that one. So, as you can see now, um, this is my floor timber at frame five and a half. You can see the darker um, extra piece of mahogany that I put on it, and that was set. 13 16 deep from the top of this well when I was laying my straight edge um, on top of the planks back here so it was touching these planks touching these planks and extending up to the front there was about a 3 8 gap underneath there meaning that I needed to raise this 3 8 to be perfectly flush with the rest of it so that's what this light strip is on top of my dark strip it's 3 8 of an inch tall just extending that up a hair bit to match my flush so that's where we are. We're getting ready to start cutting these forward planks. Had to raise the floor timber 3 eighths of an inch. So here is a quick update. 
uh, as you can see, we now have some of the forward planks cut. Um, the two outside ones here and here, the two inch wide planks, you can see they're kind of they're kind of sitting on edge because they're actually bumping into the the corner of the hull up here. So beginning on on this one is where I'll start my my angled cut about where my finger is to follow the outside of the the boat here. But uh, they're cut, they fit well. Um, Got to pick up a little bit more material to do one more wide one, one more narrow one. Same out here, wide one and a narrow one, and I may or may not put. A tiny little triangle piece right here in this corner we'll see how it looks after I get the wide and the narrows done but uh, they're not drilled they're not countersunk or screwed down they're just sitting there at roughly the right space but uh, the floor is turning out beautiful you can see the two outside ones look a little funny they're just sitting crooked but when they're screwed down it'll be straight line like the rest of them so I'm making fantastic progress. Working on bow planking now. All right, well, the zip floor is officially done. All of the parts are cut. They have all been fit, drilled, countersunk, screwed in place. Um, if you take a look right here, you can see that there's a, a support that runs all the way across. That actually doesn't go down to the keel or anything. It's just bolted to the planks and the reason I did that was because there was nothing for this narrow plank to land on because it misses the floor timber out here and there was also nothing for this plank to land on so I ran a two inch tall two inch by 13 16 strong back all the way across those doesn't actually touch anything in there it just supports these two outside planks uh, same with these two over here and then you can see one right here there's a piece seven inches long that screws to the bottom of this plank so that this plank out here at the very edge can be supported. So there's one screw there and a screw back here. You can see the uh, same thing. It's about two inch tall by uh, 13 16 seven inches long just to support this one plank out here at the end. Same over here you can see it. So the floor and the zip is done. And uh, let's get up in there and test that thing. Let's step over here. So here we are. I'm standing on it. <clears throat> All right, I am out in the middle, the very middle. Um, it's about 32 inches from frame or the floor timber at five and a half back to frame four. So 200 pounds in two spots, basically. I'm spanning probably four of these little boards. If it can support me, 200 pounds. Out in the very center it's going to support a full tank at maybe 120 pounds slid up against that frame right on that support it'll support a fuel tank full of fuel with ease I'm really not worried about bracing this at all so pretty good shape making good progress all right it's officially March 1st 2016 so for the month of February 2016 we put in 16 and a half hours uh, all of that 16 and a half hours was on the floor. That brings us up to 56 and a quarter hours into the floor, and it's officially done. All of the cut, fab, fit, uh, all of the bracing work, that's all complete. The floor is done as far as fab work goes and, and building it. Uh, keep in mind, sometime in the next month or two or three, I'm going to have to pull all of that floor planking out and encapsulate all of it in epoxy so that it's protected and then probably a couple coats of varnish to protect the epoxy from UV. So as far as floor goes, um, all of the work is done for it now. There'll just be some added uh, epoxy coating up here uh, on the floor sometime in the next few months. So Uncle Sam was good to me. We almost doubled the cost of the boat this month uh, thus far. So this month, we spent $2,195.40. Um, I tried to get all of the big ticket items while I could. So we went up a large amount of money this month, $2,195.40. So the 16 and a half hours, that brings us up to 365 and a half hours total into the zip 365 and a half 
and that $2,195.40 brings us up to a grand total in the zip of $5,634 invested. So let's see where we're at. So as far as progress goes, we're in the exact same spot as the last little portion of this video. All the floor planking is done in the zip. It looks fantastic. So we're getting ready to move on to other things. Um, let's talk about some of the stuff we bought this month. And this is gonna take some time here. So here is some of the things we bought this month. Um, you can see here, this is my molar 12 gallon tank. It's not very deep. Not very deep, not very wide, not very tall. Um, it's just perfect, perfect size to slip up underneath resting against frame five and a half. So the molar 12 gallon tank is here. Uh, you can see it's got a fill spout. Uh, this is the breather spout. Uh, here is an additional. Uh, this is where your, your fuel line would come out of. So this is your fill, this is your breather, this is your, your fuel to the engine. And then it came with a sending unit as well. Um, let's see here. So we've got, this is our steering wheel. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. This is a mahogany outer billet inner. Um, it's a Momo six bolt pattern. So I ordered the six bolt Momo pattern to Marine adapter. So it'll bolt right up to my rack push pull cable. So this is my, uh, my C star rack push pull cable. So that I have everything for the steering of the boat now. Uh, here is my pitot tube pickup for the speedometer. This is a little stainless pitot tube pickup uh, where I drill the hole to go through the transom. This will cover that up and look nice and pretty. It came with an ugly plastic one. I didn't like that. So picked up a stainless pitot tube cover. Um, this here is our 12 circuit fuse box. Um, so we can get that all mounted up. Uh, over here are the interior lights. Um, they're 50-50 RGB. LED strip lights. I'm going to cut them. I bought extension wire so that I can solder it to them and, and make one circuit through the boat. But there's our boat interior lighting. Stereo. Okay, this is where I may lose some of you guys. Bear with me. It's all going to be hidden. I promise. Uh, there's almost a thousand dollars in stereo stuff sitting here. Not quite. Uh, by the time I purchase wiring and things like that, um, patch cords, I'll probably be up over a thousand. But uh, we'll talk more detail when it, when it gets time to start installing some of this stuff, but it's a Pioneer head unit that's a media player. There's no CD player. A uh, pair of Kicker shallow mount tens. Uh, this is their Redline series. Two pairs of Kicker 4x6s. That's what we're going to mount up underneath the carling. They'll be completely hidden. Uh, 1000 watt class D mono block kicker amp to run the subs. So I'm very, very confident that this stereo uh, will be plenty loud enough that you'll never hear the outboard at any RPM. <laughs> so bear with me. Uh, and then again, I've got some other things that still haven't showed up yet. They're still, they're still on order. Uh, for instance, a, a DeWalt uh, compact router with plunge base, a set of router bits. Um, I'm, I'm also waiting for my gauges. I bought a, a ferry, a set of gauges that are beautiful, white back, stainless trim. Uh, so lots and lots of money went into the boat this month, but I tried to buy all the big ticket items. So here pretty quick, we're going to get into building the new dash, getting the steer, the rack steering, push-pull cable, steering wheel all set up and run the cable. Uh, we'll work on getting the fuel tank in place, all of my wiring, uh, my speedo stuff, all of the, the gauges in the dash, start running interior lighting. So I'm trying to get most, if not all, of the wiring and mechanical stuff done before we put the sub deck on the top of the boat uh, and, and make these, these areas much, much more difficult to access. It's nice when they're wide open. I can, I can build all my mount, mounts for things, such as the 4x6s, um, run all my wiring nice and clean so that, you know, if, if something goes bad, I can still get in here to easily change it out, but I'd much rather install all of this while it's wide open. Um, so that's what a lot of this stuff is. Holy crap, we spent a lot of money. Oh, that steering wheel is just beautiful. 
So man, we're gonna have some some exciting months coming up on the zip. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, rate, and comment. Love reading your guys' comments. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll catch you on the next update of Building the Zip.